Hi there! In the previous video I told you all about intervals and how the shapes are positioned on the neck of the guitar. Now if you're not familiar with intervals, I suggest you watch that video first. Now we use intervals every day when we pick up the guitar because intervals are the building blocks of chords and melody. Now most arpeggios and melodies are played with these closed intervals such as the second and the third, where the notes lie close together. Well, in this tutorial I'm going to show you a very easy way to get wider intervals when playing scale fragments or even scale runs. And this opens up the sound and creates a wider spectrum that is still constructed of merely a simple major or minor scale. Now of course when we can do this with these basic scales, then we can project this on modes and other scales too. So enough for this introduction, let's see what it's all about. Now in the video about the intervals, we have seen that there are intervals of which the notes are close together, like the third for instance, and that there are also intervals of which the notes lie further apart from each other, uh, like the sixth and the octave for instance. Now intervals with the notes that lie further apart from each other, we call wide intervals. And the other ones we could call closed intervals. So if we look at this uh, interval overview, we can say that all intervals up to the fourth are closed intervals and everything from the augmented fourth to the octave are wide intervals. And there are even wider intervals that span more than an octave. And these are the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, the twelfth and the thirteenth for instance, and we call them extended intervals. Now the ninth, eleventh and thirteenth are the most used extended intervals because we find these in chords as chord extensions. Think of the C major 9, for instance, or the A dominant 7 flat 13. Now we can play arpeggios that are constructed of wide intervals, such as the 5th, the 7th, the 9th, instead of stacking thirds, which is the common uh, thing to do. However, in this tutorial, we will concentrate on skill patterns with larger intervals and leave the wide interval arpeggios for a next video. We'll start with the major scale. Now the philosophy we're going to use is to play three notes of a scale on one string, then skip a string, play another three notes of the scale and strip uh, one string again, and finally play the last three notes of the scale. Um, in this way, we create wider intervals between uh, the notes of the scale. Now when we take the C major scale in the third position as an example, then we can play the notes C, D and E on the fifth string, then skip the fourth string, and play the notes B, C and D on the third string. Then skip the second string and play the notes G, A and B on the first string. Now the wider intervals that are now created are a fifth between the notes E on the fifth string and the note B on the third string, a fourth between the note D on the third string and the note G on the first string, and it sounds like this over a tonic chord. <laughs> Now the name of this technique could also have been string skipping scale patterns. So wide interval scale patterns or string skipping scale patterns, it's all the same. Now by skipping strings in this pattern, the side effect is that the fourth degree is omitted. Now in C major, this fourth degree is a so-called void note. And this is a note that doesn't sound too well over a tonic chord. And in this case, uh, that's the F over the C major 7 chord. So besides creating an open sound, we also got rid of the avoid note. So we've catched two birds with one stone. Exactly the same idea can be played with the tonic on the sixth string. Now we don't need to start on the tonic because we can start the wide interval pattern on any note of the scale, each time resulting in a slightly different sound, over the same tonic chord of course. So let's play the wide interval scale patterns of the C major scale starting on the notes D, E, F, G, A and B and play them over the tonic chord C major 7 to see how they sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now when we start the pattern on another note than the tonic, then what we've done is in fact playing a modal wide interval scale. And a mode is, as you may or may not know, a scale that starts on one of the seven notes of a major scale and each time creating another unique uh, scale, and which we call a mode. Now, for instance, if you start the B flat major scale on the second note C, we get a so-called C Dorian scale, which looks like a C minor scale, but it has a major sixth A instead of a minor sixth A flat. So we can derive six modes from that major scale. Now these six new modes all have a unique sound. And if you want to know more about modes, just watch my crystal clear video about modes. I put a link in the description. Now if we play the second pattern of the C major scale, then we have to start on the note D, right? Now instead of playing uh, this over the tonic C major 7, we are now going to play this uh, over the D minor 7 chord. Now with that we get a D Dorian wide interval scale pattern with the notes D, E, F on the 5th string, C, D and E on the 3rd string and A, B and C on the 1st string. And this sounds like this. Now see how this immediately changes the mood. By use of uh, string skipping the sound opens up beautifully and creates a crossover between an arpeggio and the skill run. Now let's take the next sound that we can make with this technique and that is the dark Phrygian mode by starting on the third note of the major scale. So we play a C major starting on the note E creating an E Phrygian mode. The flat 2 or flat 9 if you like is the characteristic note in this skill and this is the note F in the E Phrygian mode. Now we play this over an E sus4 flat 9 chord. Starting the C major scale on the 4th note gives us the F Lydian mode. This is an F major scale with an augmented 4th degree, the note B. Now we play this wide interval scale pattern over an F major 7 sharp 11 chord. Now we find the G mixolydian mode on the 5th note of the C major scale. Uh, it's a G major scale with a minor 7 degree, the note F. And we'll play this over a G dominant 7 chord. Now starting on the 6th note of the C major scale, we'll get an A aeolian mode. And this mode is equal to the natural minor scale. And we'll play this over an A minor 7 chord. Now the last mode starts on the 7th note of the major scale. And this seventh mode of C major is B Locrian. It's a B minor scale with a minor second and diminished fifth degree. And we play this over a B minor 7 flat 5 chord. Now by chaining these patterns we can really extend the open sound in our improvisation and this can, be, uh, this can sound pretty cool if you play a couple of adjacent patterns in a row. Now let's start with two shapes chained together over the G major chord that is part of the progression that resolves to E flat major in the end. It consists of the B major 7 chord, then a D7 chord as a secondary dominant for G major 7, then a C major 7 chord uh, which goes to F and this ends in a B, B flat dominant 7 chord that resolves to the tonic E flat. The uh, second example has three patterns chained together over a D Dorian vamp formed by the D minor 7 and the G dominant 7 chord. Now it's obvious that you can do this with almost any scale. So let's try this for the harmonic minor scale for instance. This is a minor scale with a major 7 degree and the E harmonic minor scale looks like this. Now you can see that the 7th degree D sharp is a major 7th and the characteristic note in this scale. 
And the scale is also characterized by the one and a half step between uh, the, the minor sixth and the major seventh degree in this scale. A wide interval pattern of this scale looks like this. And in the melody, it could sound like this. Now another interesting skill is of course the melodic minor scale, especially when used as the altered scale. Now in the next example we use the A flat melodic minor wide interval scale pattern over the G altered chord. And this results in a G altered sound. Now, as you have seen, this simple idea of playing a skill uh, with string skipping creates a new and open sound that holds the middle between a skill and an arpeggio. It's up to you to choose a certain skill over a certain chord that in the end will determine the true sound. The technique just makes it more open and melodic. Now, this is applicable to every skill you can think of, so you can experiment to your heart's content and please do to find exciting licks and melody lines. Like always, there will be an ebook and an e-booklet for this tutorial with all shapes and uh, the tablature with examples and backing tracks that are used in this video. And you can find this in my ebook store and on my Patreon page. For now, I say greets from the Netherlands and bye. <laughs>